gets down to not even science per se. I would say it's more about some core presuppositions that come from theology about whether or not Adam and Eve sit at the headwaters of the image of God, whether or not, or a better, probably the most neutral way to put it, do Adam and Eve sit at the headwaters of humanness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're the first humans in a biblical sense, but was there humanness outside the garden? Mm -hmm. And and I'm okay with that idea, and a lot of other scholars are. Um, you aren't. And so that's what really it is that pushes it that far back, because you're not okay with the humanness outside the garden. Right. Yes, that's, that's correct. And so when I see evidence of humanness in the ancient archaeological record, I want to include those people as descendants of the founding pair. But see, I think there's still two spoilers for the certainty you should have there, or two things that's unsettled it that I'm still kind of curious how you're going to work through. Let me let me just explain what the two are, and then maybe you take them one after another. All right. The first is we can definitely conceive of beings that have humanness behavior, but aren't actually internally human. Right. So they're uh, kind of like philosophical zombies. As, uh, yeah, we can conceive of that. Right. So how yeah. do you distinguish? I mean, is it possible that when we're talking, I'm not talking about anyone now in, in present day. I'm talking about like, you know, is it possible like some of the evidence you see for humanists 500,000 years ago is equivalent to a philosophical zombie and it's confusing you? That's the first one. So how would you how would you answer that? My response to that would be that this simply raises in a new dress the philosophical problem of the existence of other minds. Oh, exactly. Now, I agree, which isn't resolvable from evidence. And so now you're going to have a trouble, a troubling problem. Well, except that it's not a problem. What's well, that a problem? It's, a it's like solipsism. You know, you can't refute it, but it's, it's a philosophical conundrum that is purely academic. Uh, if you take seriously the problem of other minds, we can't prove that others around us today, our contemporaries, are Oh, no, but there's a difference because we're talking about question. ontogeny. We're talking about how the world comes to be as it is today. So we can say with certainty that there are no philosophical zombies around today. Well, I, I But 200,000 years ago, were there? I mean, that doesn't create solves. It doesn't create the problem of solipsism or total nihilism, does it? Oh, I, I would disagree. You see, I, I think that you let a, you let a, a solipsism or zombie foot in the door by <laughs> saying that these Neanderthals could have exhibited all these cognitive behaviors of people with minds, with human minds, but that they weren't really human. They were philosophical zombies. That opens the door then to saying that about contemporaries. And to me, that is both implausible and morally unconscionable.